Welcome to Weld.com, another Big Monday series. I want to do some experiments because I know I answered this question on a viewer quite a while back, but it was like one of those filming discussions, answer a question thing. I didn't do it justice. Matter of fact, somebody ripped me for trying to explain it scientifically. So I'm just going to show you. And the question was, do you ever just weld with pure argon? You know, I got pure argon. I think, I, I know people want to just get by with one gas, one gas only. Well, if you're doing some fabrication around the house and you've got, you know, some of these machines, even though they're small, got some great output, um, you can do a lot of different things with them. You know, our cart that we built up, we've got a bottle of C25 back here. We've got a small bottle of pure argon because we do short arc, globular. We'll switch over. We can do spool gun aluminum. We can do TIG, you know, with those two gases. Well, there's other gases and there's advantages to running them. But the, the question, the original question was, can you just do all your welding with pure argon? And I answered the question, to, to me, no, I wouldn't do it. You know, if you like undercut and stuff like that, then you might want to try it. But I, I want to show you what happens, and I'm going to go through a bunch of different settings here. So we're running 035 hardwire, uh, pure argon, about 25 cubic feet per hour. Right now I'm set at 18 volts, 250 range on the wire feed speed, which it should be down around the short arc, starting into the globular. Uh, Rebel 235 IC. Doesn't matter what machine, we just, we're running off this little rascal today. Uh, cool little machine. I, I, it, you know, I, I see some good stuff coming out of this one here. Haven't done anything on the SMIG part of it and won't until we get to the proper gas. But I want to start out and just run some beads here and, and describe and see if the cameraman can get in here and we can show you what's going on. I'll do some beads. I'll do a mock-up T-weld or, or a lap weld on something over here on some thinner material. And then we want to turn this thing up like we were getting into spray mode. And I'm going to show you that it's unstable in the toe of the weld and it creates undercut. Okay. So let me get my hood and my sleeves on. We'll start filming. Okay, I've, I've got some leftover 3 16 plate that I have cleaned the mill scale and light rust off of and I want to run next to this beautiful uphill root pass that we did the other day and been tested it but I just want to start out and run through a couple of adjustments here. All right, I'm sure you heard that. And uh, you know, to look at it just as far as the wire hitting the arc, doesn't, nothing seems to be alarming. I can tell you this thing's roped up and tall like a big old worm sitting here and I don't like it. Could you stick stuff together with it? Yeah. Um, you know, again, I'm, I'm gonna go through some settings here and we'll talk about what's going on. I'm going to go up to uh, 19 and a half. Let's go up to 21 volts. We're 18. We'll go 21 or we'll go 25, 20.5 and leave the wire alone. I'll run in the toe of this weld. Okay, I left the wire feed speed the way it was, increase the voltage, you know, in the attempt to get this to flatten out. All I see right now is a bunch of fluttering, and I see this haze out around the, the parent metal. It, it's, uh, it's about that, it's not wetting in right, okay? So I can get the camera guy to reach over here and crank me up to like 23 and a half, and we'll go up to 300. We're getting better as far as a, a weld bead, but uh, I'm still not liking this at all. And I, you know, I'm going to tell you I'll never like it because I've been here before. 
and I tried to explain what happens with just pure argon. And we'll eventually get to the equation here, but I want you to see every bit of this. I'm going to 26,500. Uh. Okay, we're getting close to that spray mode that we like, okay? 26 and a half on an 035 wire in an argon rich atmosphere is getting real close to that spray. We still got a little heavy popping going on. The bead is laying down somewhat. But now I'm gonna go 28 and I may go to 425. I don't want that crackling in there, but I want this fluid weld pool because eventually I wanna show physically that it's unstable and it's unstable in and around the toe of the weld creates undercut. Okay, I changed my mind. I, uh, I wanted to create more of a fluid weld pool and I left the wire feed speed around 400 if I need to increase it just a little bit. But again, I'm trying to get that fluid weld pool. Got a big reaction going on around this pool here. And it's around those edges. Now again, I clean this. I ground this down to clean white metal. So what I want to do now is reach for a couple of pieces where I can do a, a fillet weld. Let's do a fillet weld at these settings here. I may need to tweak the wire and the volts just a little bit, but it won't be much. Let's make an educated guess. We'll turn the wire up just a little bit, see if we can't make this a little more stable, but real erratic, okay? Nothing, nothing cool about it. So I left it at 28 volts. God, that's hot for 035 hardwire in an argon rich. Uh, 450 on the wire feed speed. color, I don't like the edges, don't like the profile. I don't know what I could do playing with this machine to get this right, you know, I mean, it's just, I could, I could probably show you, I mean, we could max the machine out for crying out loud, I just don't think it'll ever get to a stable condition. You want to max the machine out? Yeah. All right, Esau, here you go, but I'm going to do a 3 8 plate. All right, we're going to turn this puppy up. Gross. I don't like any of it. We're not stable, we're not into a good true spray, but good Lord, you'd think you would be at 30 volts. Don't like it. Is it stuck together? Yeah, maybe, is it right? No, I don't think so. I don't even want to cut an edge, but I just don't think it's there. All right, let me get my gear off, towel off, go to makeup, I'll be right back. Okay, um, I think we, kind of made our point here. You know, again, we'll get back to the original question, do you weld with pure argon? Well, I don't, and this is the reason why. You know, the, the whole thing about these gas blends, there are some common gases that you'd spray with. You know, above 90% argon, you get into this good spray mode. 
98% argon, 2% oxygen, 98%, or I'm sorry, 95% argon, 5% oxygen, 92% argon, 8% CO2, or 90-10, 10% CO2. Those gases are pretty common in industry. A lot of, matter of fact, a lot of people are going to 90-10 just to standardize things, standardize parameters, uh, especially when it comes to robotics. It's the addition, the, the small amounts of oxygen that stabilize the arc and help wet the, wear, the parent or weld metal into the parent metal, okay? Now, we recently had a comment that oxygen is detrimental. Man, you need to read up on this stuff. It's been around. These gases have been around. I've been doing it for 40 something years. They, these, are, these are gases that you spray with. Again, it helps stabilize the arc and helps uh, drive or wet the weld metal into the parent metal, get superior bead performance and mechanics and everything. So, you know, man, I sweated on this one. I, I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal when we started this video, but wow, you know, I got a lot of spatter and a lot of bad looking welds just to prove a point. If you want to weld with pure argon, go ahead, but this is the reason I won't do it ever. You know, I'll reach for a bottle. If I've got a bunch of spray welding to do and I'm going to turn my values up, I'm going to 95.5 or, or uh, 92.8 or something. Um, that's just the way it is, you know, and it, 035, 045, larger wires. Uh, hit Instagram and ask some of these guys what they spray with. Ask Migman, ask uh, Caveman, ask some of these guys what they spray with. Caveman's been real good about putting technical data out on some of his welds and uh, got to admire uh, how he explained things and of course his skill level and everything. So check him out, he's got some good info. Again, I hope this uh, is a good response to the viewer question and other people that are commenting you know, why, why don't you just use a gas or, you know, pure argon? Not me. I just voted myself out for the very last time. Don't ever ask me to do another shot of this kind of stuff because I want to do something fun. This wasn't fun. Appreciate you watching Weld.com. Please subscribe to the videos. Send me an air conditioner too. It's hot, man. Thank you. Yeah? That means I'm waiting on you. Oh. Oh. Hi. <laughs> My bad. Oh, see, I had it all set up, and you go ahead and move it. Refocus. That's what you do. You're always focusing. I need to get me some of those nitrogen-filled underwear. It's hot in here.